Welcome back to On The Shelf Gaming, the only show on the internet called On The Shelf Gaming. Damn, bro. What if it wasn't, though? Well, we got, we got a fucking problem, man. We gotta That's protect true. our brand. We are gonna destroy you for using our brand. Of course, then we find out that their channel's been around since, like, 2008. Right, and we just opened up this huge fucking legal battle. Because <laughs> they have, like... They actually have a brand with, like, merchandise and shit, and we've been just stealing from them, unbe like, unabashedly this whole fucking time. And they take us to court. And they play that clip of you going, <laughs> I love stealing, <laughs> I love, love taking, taking things. things. And, like, your honor, does that seem like the kind of person <laughs> who doesn't love to steal our brand? <laughs> and we're just like, no, you don't understand. Sean came up with the name. It's his fault. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> God. What is the last joke that we've told on the show that you'd want run off in court? Because no joke being run <laughs> off in court ever goes over. Well, no, because they, they always, purposefully, obviously, um, but they always take everything super seriously and be like, oh, why'd you say this? And it's like, oh, well, I said it because it was a fucking joke. Right. <laughs> and it's like, well, what makes it so funny it's like well when i explain it to you it's not gonna be funny anymore god it's not well i, don't, I can't even imagine any joke i've sold on the show that i would want run off in court i mean same it's like i love stealing i love taking things now is that something you find funny Mr. yes it Sacred? is see that's the thing though like if you're ever in court and they're reading off jokes that you've made and they're not like monstrous right. your jokes were like jokes like that your jokes were not i'm gonna murder some people <laughs> like that's not a joke that's just yelling a threat and sometimes people might find that humorous um but like with something like that you can't half-ass it you can't let the lawyer be right by being like I mean, yeah, you know, I, I thought... No, you have to be like, yeah, it is funny when was, you tell it right. It was funny then. It's not very funny now because you're a shit comedian. <laughs> exactly. Probably don't sprinkle in that last part. Well, uh, maybe not with those exact words at least. I don't know. You never know when the lawyer is also trying to do stand-up on the weekends and, like, <laughs> that they're just, that, just going to start pulling every fucking, like, Edgeworth bullshit that they can come up with to, to get you down. <laughs> the enemy hadn't cut on yet, Shippo said, I thought. So why are they all here attacking us? <laughs> no, they haven't caught on to the fact that they're all about to die. Fair. Shippo's got the bloodlust. He does. Makes sense. He is a demon. A full blooded demon. The most demon blood, one might say. I don't know. Of all the jokes we've ever made on the show that you can think of off the top of your head, what would be the worst one? Not necessarily that you made, just that any of us have made. What do you think would be the worst joke? God, there's just so many. It's hard <laughs> to even think about, like, to, specific to be jokes. On, to be read out in court. Yeah, I, I can't... Because there's so many. There are so many. <laughs> God, well, there's just all the shit that we've said about Brock Lesnar. I just don't want that read off anywhere Brock Lesnar might <laughs> as, hear it. As he's suing us, <laughs> it's like, did you refer to Brock Lesnar as, quote, the piss a, guy? <laughs> well, yeah, but I wasn't serious. What about your next statement where you're like, yeah, we're joking, but also that is just what he is. Well, yeah, I mean, he is. And what about this statement here where you called him, quote, the piss incarnate? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that was a really good episode title, right? <laughs> like, you would click on that shit, wouldn't you? <laughs> I think we're done here. <laughs> God, maybe that time we talked about butt stuff and incest for a while. Yeah, good times. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. The time when we discussed... I don't know. The court could maybe help us decide for sure exactly when a uh, close relationship is too close. <laughs> They'd be like, according to the laws of the uh, great state of Alabama, uh, <laughs> cousins okay, brothers and sisters not allowed. Like, good, good, good to know that. I've got Your that honor. worked out. <laughs> or you know what? It could really fuck over Crandon. We talked about him eating people a lot <laughs> in our wrestling playthrough. Yeah. <laughs> 
So you're here as a character witness for Mr. Crandon. Uh, did you or did you not say that he, quote, eats people? <laughs> well, we never quite said it like that, Your Honor. You are, know. are you sure? Because I'm, I've got a transcript of your video, uh, uh, WWE uh, Part 24, where you said, quote, Man, Crandon is going to save so much money on his $11,000 worth of steaks when he eats these people. Okay, but he's not just eating them, Your Honor. He's first beating them to death. <laughs> As you do when you're a pro wrestler. You know, he was a WWE champion for three years or something. <laughs> was he? Uh, well, let us call out our next witness, uh, Paul Levesque. <laughs> Mr. H, have you ever employed this man here? Uh, nobody have. Have not. <laughs> we we have not uh, employed that man even a single time. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's the impersonating well, a career man. <laughs> impersonating a WWE champion. You know that's a crime all of its own. <laughs> it's like okay, but if he didn't, if he wasn't actually a WWE champion, does that not prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that he did not actually eat people? It's like hmm. I suppose you're right. They just flip the whole courtroom around. Uh, Mr. Sacred, you're currently on trial for slander of Crandon? <laughs> well, I didn't say it first. Eric said it first. <laughs> he took a plea deal. <laughs> he rolled over on you. I'm just sitting in the witness box. He did it, and he's going to do it again if you don't do something to stop him. <laughs> he's a monster. <laughs> Who knows what he's going to say next? It could be about you. <laughs> to the judge. The judge like, ah, oh, death sentence! <laughs> uh, show him to slander me. I haven't even done anything yet! And now you'll never get the chance. <laughs> My <laughs> reputation is intact. Alright, well I'm gonna go drink and drive some more now. <laughs> Wait, did I say that out loud? Fuck! It just cuts to him in the fucking witness seat. <laughs> I'm the judge! <laughs> Yeah, the court just flips around again. It's like, so, your honor, drinking and driving, we've got your admission right here. Is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, I didn't actually do it yet. Denied. <laughs> Guilty. Could the court reporter please notate this? And I point to you with a typewriter. <laughs> of course, your honor. Sentence, death. <laughs> Brandon comes out. He's the executioner now. <laughs> Triple H has a great fucking super long WrestleMania entrance to come down and watch for some reason. <laughs> God. Comes out on a motorcycle. <laughs> Wait a second. Driving in the courtroom? <laughs> Everything flips. Uh, so, Mr. Triple H, if that is your real name... <laughs> Reckless driving in a courtroom? How do you plea? Uh, not guilty. Uh, all right, well, that seems pretty clear to me. Uh, you're free to go. Well, no. I Calls up Vince. He's like, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm out. He's like, wait, <laughs> is that the Vince McMahon? We've been trying to get a hold of him for months. <laughs> oh, man. You got sued. How was that? Any updates on that? <laughs> Uh, no, unless something changes, we won't know anything until November at okay. the earliest. <laughs> have we ever talked about how you got sued on the show? I know you and I haven't, but have you been crying? I don't know. Mm. I got sued! Eric got sued! I rear-ended somebody at like five miles an hour. And they say they were horribly injured and need a bunch of money. As people are wont to do. Right. And that's the whole story. <laughs> yep. Well, what confuses me, because, like, didn't they settle and then fucking sue you again or something? Uh, well, this is a different person than the first time. Oh. I ruined someone else years ago at, like, 10 miles an hour, and they also claimed that they were horribly injured. Uh, and then sued. Man, you have bad luck rearing people. Yeah. And then not getting sued over it. Yeah, I'm gonna try to not do it anymore. <laughs> of course, they said that after the first time, too, and, you know... It's just <laughs> the world works in mysterious ways. It's just so tantalizing to yeah. urge to sue people. <laughs>
<laughs> or I mean rear end people. Yeah. Why not both? <laughs> so, Mr. Eric, uh, you say uh, why not both <laughs> to the urge of rear ending people? And suing them? Well, not the same people necessarily. Hmm. Repeat insurance fraud. <laughs> it's good to know. Well, what about you, Your Honor? You've never rear-ended someone? The courtroom just flips around. <laughs> He's the one who said, uh, I, uh, sweating fucking bullets, thinking about the dead little girl from his past. <laughs> okay. Damn. I got really dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta find some way to ruin the bit. It's my job on the show. Let's use this one. Not that we need to, just because we haven't seen it yet, I don't think. So, because the when we got this one, we were by ourselves, and I was worried it was just gonna kill us. Get him! Fuck they asses up! Oh, Max God damn it! And oh, then we die. Oh, that's right. That's the one that kills us. Yeah. Still though, 999 damage. I assume that's probably guaranteed. I would assume so. Yeah. Oh wait, but we didn't get any XP. Unfortunate. I mean, we're still the highest level guy in the party, so yeah. it doesn't really matter. We, we we got the levels to spare. What the fuck? <laughs> we didn't even get into the screen yeah, before we were already in a battle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't I don't miss this from games. No, me either. Uh, so speaking of rear ending, uh, how do you feel about the term rear ending as a slang term for anal? Pretty fucking funny, not gonna lie. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, I I agree, honestly. <laughs> it's like so many sex terms are just really, really dumb. Oh yeah. And that one is also really, really dumb, but in a humorous way. Oh yeah. I've been seeing um, the, every now and again. I don't know where they're coming from, but like, there's a bunch of like illustrated sex positions. Mm -hmm. Um. And one of my favorites, it's called the tune-up. Uh -huh. uh, and it's where the guy lies down on his back, like on the bed or something, with his head hanging over. And then the girl fucking, like, squats over his face. Oh, jeez. It's supposed to be like a mechanic working under a car. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty fucking funny. That is... That's one of those things where there's a there's a part of me that's morbidly curious that wants to try out just like super stupid weird sex, sex positions. positions. But then it's also like there's a reason why there's like three main sex positions. Right. And they're used almost exclusively. Cause it's like you got missionary, you got cowgirl, you got doggy. That covers you in ninety nine point nine 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 percent of situations. Right. <laughs> And in that point zero 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 one percent of situations, you probably just shouldn't be having sex. Yeah. <laughs> I say shit's gotten fucking. Well, it's <laughs> it's like uh, the Olympics. Um, they they've installed anti-sex beds <laughs> I saw at that. the fucking Olympic Village, <laughs> and someone <laughs> retweeted it. And the funny thing is, to a true fucker, there is no such thing. <laughs> oh. Well, and, because it's one of those things that I guess it's just, like, kind of always been a thing at the Olympics. When you're stuck in the Olympic Village... You fuck. Yeah, because it's like, what else are you going to do? Right. Which I... I don't know, I kind of get, but I kind of don't. It's like... I mean, it's not literally everyone in the Olympics is a grown-up, but most people at the Olympics are grown-ups. Right. So if they want to have sex e with each other, who fucking cares? Right. Yeah, but I guess the Olympics does for some reason. Right, it makes them look bad, I guess. Bro, here's here's the plan, though, bro. Next Olympics, we'll go hide out in the Olympic Village, pretend to be Olympians. <laughs> yeah, well, we can really sell the look for at least. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll say we'll uh, if if strongman people ask, we'll say we do like something stupid. Otherwise, we uh, if people who aren't strongman type people ask, we'll say we do some kind of strongman something. That's fair. We can get away with that. I look close enough to Eddie Hall. <laughs> yeah, basically <laughs> indistinguishable. Anyway, Eddie, it's nice having you here. Uh, you know, Sacred, you know, he, he really hasn't been working out as well as I'd hoped he would. You know, we've been doing this for like 10 years now, and he's still 
fucking garbage at it, you know? So I'm glad to have someone who's actually good at stuff here. British muscles. Hell yeah. <laughs> See, I knew you'd get it. God. I didn't show you the fight where he fought those two guys, but boy was it bad. <laughs> God. The, the clip you sent me of him fighting two guys was so dumb. Which it, it had to be. Oh yeah. A handicap MMA match is the stupidest idea. But I love it. Right. Even though I shouldn't. It's just... It's by all objective measures incredibly stupid. Right. But well, I can't help but like the idea anyway. Oh, Sam, I love freak fights. I want more shit like that. You know, because I, I fucking... I want to live in an anime. So, like, I love... I love the idea of, like, yeah. In this fighting promotion, this 500-pound, 8-foot-4 goliath of a man is gonna fight... Three normal dudes. <laughs> right. And I, th I think that's fucking And wonderful. those normal dudes? Sacred Eric and Crandon. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I just think that's fucking wonderful. Well, and the two guys he fought weren't even fighters. They were, uh, they, they organized the event, but I think they're like Polish content creators. Ah. Uh, they're these twin brothers or something or other Well, like yeah, that. That, that's really not ideal. Yeah. Someday, if we're ever famous YouTubers... We should have an MMA fight. <laughs> like you and me? Or yeah, like we host me. an event? You okay. versus me. Okay, I'm down. I'll fucking... I'll fight you. Why Hell not? yeah. It'll be fun. It will be fun <laughs> for me. <laughs> Everyone says that until they get knocked out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's gonna be real fun. <laughs> when the referee Crandon hands me those brass knuckles to finish you <laughs> off. Well, it's okay, because before he does that, Referee Crane is going to hand me the gun. <laughs> <laughs> but did he remember to hand you the bullets? Oh, shit, I see him handing him right now. Crandon, no! <laughs> you traitor! <laughs> pop, pop. <laughs> you know, technically, there have been fights in the UFC where that would not have been against the... <laughs> God, UFC 1 could have been so good if they weren't all pussies. Yeah. God, yeah, okay. Uh, anyway, so that's our stretch goal. A million subscribers, and Eric and I will have a legit MMA fight. And we'll upload it to YouTube. Yeah, and it'll be the most embarrassing thing you've ever seen in your life, I'm sure. But also, you want to see it, right? You yeah, no, that'd be fucking hilarious. I, I would watch that shit. I would, because, like, you know, in, like, the three minutes that the fight is happening... You and I are going to fucking hate each other, and we're going to hate doing it, and we're going to be like, why the fuck did we do it? We found them again! God! We are so good at finding them! But also, when we're watching the MMA fight, it's going to be like, God, I'm glad we did this. This is funny. <laughs> yeah. Is it bad that I can't think of anything funnier than beating each other up? <laughs> For us specifically, or just yeah, for people in general? For us specifically. Uh, it probably signals some kind of problem in our friendship. Is it a problem, Lou? Isn't it? We're, we're sporting gents, I would say. You and I both have a love for combat and you know, the martial arts and, you know, duking it out anytime, anywhere, on any condition. Yeah. So I feel like it's a good thing that as friends... We want to fight each other in the Ring of Honor! Yeah. Not Ring of Honor, but like, in the Ring of Honor. But, Ring of Honor, if you want to host our 1 million subscriber special MMA fight... <laughs> God, it'll be so expensive getting a cage. <laughs> nah, for sure. Sorry. But like, I want to do it right, you know, I don't want to just go roll around in the fucking dirt. No, I want to get like a mat with a fucking cage. We gotta do it in the octagon. Yeah. Well, I mean, it can't be the octagon because it's like a UFC trademark. True. But we can put it in a hexagon, which is basically the same thing. That's true. Or I guess we could just do it in a ring. You know, I mean, like, yeah. we do, like Pride used to. But I, but I just don't like ring-based MMA as much. It's, it's just not the same. It's really not as good. Pride was such a mixed bag because, like, I like a lot of Pride fights, except for the ones that fall immediately into the ropes and then they can't fucking reach each other. Oh, I know. Hey, look. Pride is such a weird beast. Oh, I know. I mean, it's not anymore, obviously, because it's long dead, yeah, but long it dead. was at the time, but at least. But bring it back. Yakuza, Yakuza fixing it all. <laughs> <laughs> the Yakuza can do anything, and when they bring back Pride, 
The number one superstar golden boy? <laughs> I mean, yeah, he doesn't like to fight, but he can fight. And you're going to tell me that if you framed it as a learning experience and put a hot ring girl to talk to him a couple of times, he wouldn't be in that ring immediately? Right. Man. Remember when Rampage Jackson fucking powerbombed that dude in Pride? <laughs> Good times. Well, I don't know if you've heard the story about, like, why he fucking did that. Because he said it was the it was the only time he ever lost his cool in a fight. But, uh, you know, he was fighting the guy, and, you know, he, he was trying to get him out in. And the dude kept uh, healing him in the fucking face. And, mm. like, with his heel, and was, like, dislocating his jaw. Like, he could feel his jaw coming out of place. So he buried his head in the guy's tummy to fucking, uh, to, like, keep from getting healed in the face. And the guy immediately tried to tell on the ref that Rampage was knocked out. Well, I guess the guy, the, I guess all the referees at Pride fucking hated him. Cause, and, and they, so they would have called the fight. And so Rampage got pissed that this dude was trying to, like, lie and say <laughs> that he was knocked out. So he said, well, that's fucking it. And so he just picked him up and power him. <laughs> That's great. And he, he's, yeah, he says that was the only time he's ever lost his cool to fight. But goddamn, what a time to do it. Right. When you fucking power bomb a motherfucker. Man, we need to watch some more UFC fights. Ah, oh, bro, you know what we should do? What's up, bro? We should watch every title fight in UFC history. This is going to be a real mixed bag. It is going to be. This is <laughs> going to be so great about it. <laughs> the only bad thing about doing that is there's lots of full 25 minute long decisions. Right. But it's okay, because it makes up for a lot of 30 second round one knockouts that <laughs> started riots. True. That's the bad thing about booking a one show a one fight card. Right. It's like if that fight don't deliver, people get pissed. Oh yeah. It's like I forget what pay-per-view it was. But I think the match was Goldberg versus DDP in WCW. Oh, Obviously, yes. this is not MMA. Right. Uh, but, like, the match cut off halfway because the pay-per-view ran over. Mm -hmm. And so they ended up showing it for free on Nitro anyway. Right. And also, I don't know. It, it seems like people didn't think it was that good from what I've heard some people say about it. I don't know. I've never seen the match, so I don't know anything about it. I don't think I've ever watched one full WCW match. Ever. Yes. Yeah, probably same. And I, I hate it because I kind of want. There's part of me who's like, man, I, I want to go and like watch, like when the WWE Network was as it was originally. It's like, man, I want to go and I want to like watch all the Raws and all the Smackdowns and all the pay per views, like from the beginning and just see everything. But then it's like, man, but there's so much bad stuff <laughs> that I don't want to watch. And it's like, well, I guess I get to skip through the parts that fucking suck. Oh, yeah. I was leaving. Uh, so it's not like it's a super high-risk kind of thing. But I don't know. It's like if you skip half of it because it sucks, did you really even watch it all? Right. But at the same time, if you waste your life watching stuff that sucks, what are you even doing with your life? <laughs> Wasting it. Obviously. Duh. Man, if you were ever at a, a at a MMA event and everyone got super pissed and started fighting, mm -hmm. like with the McGregor versus Khabib fight, would you also fight or would you just try to escape? Uh, no, I would definitely try to get out of there. <sighs> Understandable. I I want to say that no, I'd fucking I'd pick an opponent. I start going <laughs> at it. That if I'm already at the party, I'm having some punch. But no, I'd also probably yeah, try to it, escape. As even as someone who really loves fighting. Like, not fighting, like, watching fighting, but just, like, fighting and, and doing the actual fighting. Right. Um, like, as an adult, knowing that any random person can pl who sucks at fighting completely by accident can fuck you up for life or kill you. It's like, there's just never a good reason to do it. Oh, yeah. Unless you literally have no other choice. You can't right. get away. Yeah. Which, granted, um, that was kind of the case with the McGregor versus well, Khabib well, fight. Yeah, it, like, <laughs> it kind of just depends on the situation. But, like, if there's an opportunity to get away, you, you always got to take it. Oh, yeah. And we're going to take this opportunity to get away until next, next time, time on, on the, the Shelf, shelf Gaming. Gaming.